Chamber. Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Chief Ayad and <coughs> Deputy Kennedy. Gentlemen, first, I think what we'll do for everybody's convenience is just look at the rolling stock first. Okay? Okay. And uh, we see your beautiful new uh, 2016 Pierce. Yes, ma'am. And it says excellent condition. That excellent. makes everybody happy. Let's see what we've got. Ma'am, yeah. since you're on that, could I start with a public service announcement real quick? Oh, oh please. This, yeah. this actually is in reference to rolling stock and also, more importantly, firefighter safety. Uh, this afternoon, we had a situation. Engine 4 was out on 95, and um, typically when we're out there, the engine is blocking whatever scene might be there. And uh, one of our firefighters actually was almost hit by a tractor trailer that Ooh, failed wow. to yield. As you might imagine, I know that in this state we have a, a move over law. So anybody who's working on the side of the highway, their their safety is guaranteed if you aren't in their lane, um, or at least to some degree. Uh, this afternoon it was exceptionally close and very dangerous. So as far as rolling stop, that could have been an issue there. More importantly, my firefighter safety was uh, potentially hampered by by a uh, it was a tractor trailer unit that failed to yield, failed to move over, and uh, hit the cones. That's that's what made them alert. So I'd like they to remind the all of you. the bad guy. They, <laughs> they talked to him. Um, but I would like to remind all the viewers that there is a move over law, and if you see whether it's tow professionals, construction, Excellent. police, or fire, please move over. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Your rolling stock list is pretty clean. The two SMEALs, the 2001 2002, are not looking too cheerful. You're targeting them or one of them next? We are. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and we're That's still assessing the situation on engine two. And your uh, engine four and two of the three ambulances are in excellent condition. Do you have a projection? For the Ambulance 3? Well, uh, Ambulance 3 is seven years old. Uh, we aim to replace them at six. Uh, as you know, we just purchased a 2016 um, Ford F450 yep. for Ambulance 1. Um, that ambulance, I believe, when it left us was also nine years old, right. is it not? Yeah. So we're a little bit behind the time as far as that goes. We're working to maintain and uh, and grow the ambulance account. As it stands right now, we're researching the possibility of, of uh, looking for new ambulance billing services. But once that account reaches a happy level again, we'll entertain the idea of uh, purchasing another ambulance. Excellent. Because we did get out of sync. There. A little bit, yes. Then you've got good, excellent. Now we're down to the utility vehicles. 2005 Ford F-250, the 2000 International Bucket, and the 2011 Crown Vic. Yes, ma'am. That's actually a cruiser that came over from the police department. Oh, I so, wondered about that. Yeah. Uh, we lettered it up, and uh, it's in good operating condition right now. Our firefighters take that to the fire academy. <coughs> going to oh, okay. As far as the bucket truck goes, uh, we've just had some minor repairs done to that for high idle. Uh, it's in very good condition. It's still operating. When we're using it, actually, you may have seen us out in the street the other day. We were replacing some of the light bulbs over at Stickney Terrace uh, on the street signals. Uh, as far as the 2005 utility truck, that is definitely showing signs of wear. The frame is uh, a problem, and so is the more over the body. And the deputy is certainly, he's nodding over here because he knows that he's been telling me about that one for the last two weeks. Uh -huh. And the ATV is not looking too happy. The older one, the red one, four-wheeler, is uh, certainly older. Right. Um, the newer one, I believe, is 2013? 14? 14. 14. Yeah. 14. <clears throat> And the uh, Marine 2 motor, you already have accommodated. We're, well, actually, I believe it was removed from this one. We're going to entertain the idea of moving it to next year. Uh, as it stands right now, that boat is um, harbored inside of our Brown Ave Fire Station, the Beach Fire Station. Okay. Uh, it's taken out for when we need it in uh, Hampton Harbor. Marine 1 is still in the water. Uh, last year, we replaced an engine. So, Because other than that, you know, good good job and good uh, condition on the vehicles in the department. Anyone have questions on the vehicles? <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sonny? <laughs> One question I have is, you know, a bunch of towns in the area. Is there any coordination in purchasing equipment between the towns? Because, you know, small towns can't afford it. And you call on these town if there's an emergency. For municipal aid, we certainly do. Uh, for mutual aid, I apologize. Yeah. We certainly do. However, uh, this town, this community is one of the larger ones in the area, <laughs> and we, our frontline apparatus, whether it's engine one or engine four, reserve apparatus engine two and three, and ladder one, they're responsible primarily for our jurisdiction, which is our town. 
we do go mutual aid to other towns and we supply them with assistance. Um, but as far as coordination with purchasing, there's really no mechanism to do that as far as pricing goes. They're on a different time frame than we are. Ours operate, uh, we, we drive up engine hours and mileage faster than Hampton Falls, faster than uh, Northampton does. Yeah. So to, it would be a hard thing to coordinate with a con like a consortium or anything like that. Yeah, I see Exit has built some high-rise condos. They have. You know, yep. did, they, did they purchase equipment to fight a fire there? Or? They will. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, they were actually a new ladder. They, yeah, they just have a new ladder. So. You know what I'm trying to get I, I totally understand what you're saying. Okay. Getting into the main body of the budget now. <coughs> Starting administration, regular wages. Uh, I'll move to final GSP. Well, what, what amount are you moving? The 225-203? Sounds good to me. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Henderson. Okay. The fire chief is the only member of the Hampton Fire Department who does not belong to the union because it was a very canny deputy chief a number of years ago <laughs> who insisted on joining the union. Uh, the pay raises that were passed out July 11th and effective April 1st uh, included a 2% raise for non-union chief of department. That was 1427 in this calendar year, and the total was $1,903 for the year, April 1st to March 31st next year. Deputy and uh, Secretary are all uh, both union, and you see their salaries there. Does anyone have a question on that section of the budget? Regular wages, Chief, Deputy, and Secretary. Madam Chair, what you're saying is you're talking about a 2% increase in the 2017's budget. Well, the 2% increase <laughs> carries over for the final three months into the 2017 budget. Okay, so there's no targeted raise in the fire department for non-union? Correct. In the 2017 budget? I think not. Is that accurate, Chief? Uh, I received the raise in July, but I do not no. believe there's one slate of next year. Jamie, 2017 increases for non-union are not yet projected? They are in the uh, merit line item. Right, but right. not targeted for the non-union. Not in this line, not in this budget. But they have not been assigned. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Everybody comfortable with the 225-203? In favor? <laughs> Unanimous. See, you, know, you remember, Chuck. You know how it works. Okay. Overtime is zero. Holiday pay. Two Excuse weeks pay me. per CBA. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Mary Louise, the second on that motion, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Pay. Henderson. Thank you. Thank you. That's good, Barbara. Thank you for keeping us on our toes. Holiday. Regular, regular wages. Yes, regular wages, yeah. 225, 203. Now I'm on holiday pay, 88,449. Two weeks. So moved. moved by Mr. Second. Jones, seconded by Mr. Henderson. You understand the intent? Ginny, have a question? Yes, I do. Why are we going line by line? You just want to well, go I'm line by line? Well, I'm going segment by segment, my dear. If we go quickly and nobody has questions, we'll hop right to the next segment. Okay. I just want to make sure we understand each of the parts. And and the budget is, is pretty well drafted here, so it's right. pretty clear. So, In favor of the motion for holiday pay, 88449 Unanimous, I think. Mr. Jones? Yes. Okay. You skipped over overtime wages, by the way. I skipped over what? No, overtime no, was zero. Zero. Tab. Career incentives. <laughs> she said it. Yeah, the chairman said it. He didn't make a motion on his own. Oh, you don't need oh. to make a motion. It's zero. <laughs> Career incentive, $600. Longevity pay for the secretary, according to the collective bargaining agreement. Motion in favor of the uh, 600 uh, uh, Could I make a motion? Tell, Wait, could a I? Quick question. Um, what is longevity pay? She's been there a long time. I know. I understand that. But <laughs> I mean, just because someone's been there... That, that's a benefit that was negotiated with the union, so she's the only member of the department at this time that receives that. Uh, after a certain amount of years, there's a benefit that's paid out. After five years, seven, I believe 15 is the next step after that, not long after that, right? Yeah. Um, where if you achieve that, that length of time in your in your career path, they, they award you a one-time uh, stipend. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, that's all it was good to and it's kind of a reward for being brave enough to work for the town of Hampton a long time. 
Can I make a motion, fact, Madam, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to uh, for career incentives. 600. 600 tuition reimbursement for 2500 oh, staff okay. development for 885 Reynolds and leases for zero uh, uh, uniforms for 33,840 <coughs> supplies and expenses for 4583 because none of those have an increase a zero increase perhaps we could just make one motion for those no, several of them you can still discuss it okay just no. Stephen no, go insane. Anybody want to second that? Second. Wait a second, so I want to understand what you did because you went. Back. I'm just, I'm just taking you career. Did everything except new equipment. You did career incentives, tuition reimbursement at the reduced amount twenty five hundred. Yep. Staff development at eight eighty five. Eighty five. Uh, rentals and leases are zero. Zero. Uniforms thirty three thousand eight forty. And supplies, supplies and expenses seventy one fifty five. Correct. Right. All right. Uh, you understand the intent, seconded by Mr. Henderson. Questions? I have a, an observation. Anybody have questions? I just want to point out one thing to you at the bottom of page 31 where it says uniforms. Covers the cost of cleaning uniforms, purchase of new uniforms, etc. This does not include <coughs> turnout gear. Correct. This is this regular is uniforms. uniforms, regular garments. Right. This does not include the, the turnout gear to protect the men. In favor of the motion. Unanimous. All right. Now, gasoline. And thank you, Chief, because you guys broke out gasoline and diesel <coughs> and, and uh, all on the specific lines. I have a question for Christy. You said average use, et cetera, 195 a gallon. Does that include or not include the state and federal taxes that we do not pay. Where does the 195 come from? It's consistent throughout the budget. I just want to know where you got it. 195 was an amount that we came up with by looking at average cost of per gallon. It does not include the taxes, so you are correct. Average cost per gallon? Yep. Well, how much is the state and federal tax? About 42 cents per gallon? Between 42 and 44. 42 and 44 per gallon. So I can get gas at the mobile station up here for 209 a gallon. So to, to explain wh where the model came from is that they've been tracking gallons and the fluctuating price, taking an average. And then through our discussions, we came up with, because we don't know exactly where it's going to be, a small amount on top of that for a fluctuation for the next year. Now we have to watch as the year has gone on, that number's changed, so we can dial it in tight. Okay. And that's one of the questions clearly that the committee had in the Okay. That's, but that's the methodology we've arrived at all of these gas okay. And I do like the way the Chiefs broke out gasoline and diesel, so you just don't have a, a lump there. Madam Chairman. Okay. Madam Chairman. Before we move off the gas, I have a couple of questions. So do I. You want gas? Okay. We're, we're purchasing uh, gas through the WIX card. WIX. 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 What, what, what is the spelling on that? W-E-X. W-E-X. Correct. Now, uh, Wix has a processing fee, I assume. Uh, no, no, they work for free. Well, no, I mean it's it's. I mean, certainly they get the credit card stuff, and uh, you know, uh, what we pay from them. I'd have to break. I got to break down the bill. I, let me let me say I have to break down the bill. Okay. There's nothing major in our sign-up sheets. None of that stuff. They get a processing fee. I think on the other side. Oh, it's on the. Uh, yeah, I think so. The seller side. Side. Okay. What we pay, and it, it's a flexibility. Uh, we found the prices from the state weren't fluctuating. They were up very high. Yeah, we found that, that a couple years ago, too. Yeah. Actually, it was, it was this committee last year that yeah, forced us to start looking harder at that. Yeah. Um, we went to the WEX. WEX gets flexibility to go to pretty much any gas station, um, and you just buy it at the pump. Use the card, and they do the reimbursement. The law changed about a year ago. Okay. We used to have to do that paperwork ourselves. The law changed that allowed the vendor to do it for us, and that's a tremendous savings in administrative time for us. So they do all that work. We just pay the price that they show us at the right. pump, which is a tremendous savings. Now, the gallon calculation, is that based on actual experience yeah. prior 12 months? We have a two-year we have a two year data set at this point. Okay. Um, we're, yeah, we're, we're, this is based on 16, but we're getting more and more accurate data as we collect from their data set when we have it. The larger the pool, the more accurate it will be. But right now, that's what we're using. Okay. So it's for the prior 12 months, Average, right? the, number, the average in the budget is for 
Okay. Checked it out. 195 for the gallons. For the gallons. But if you have two years of data set, why aren't you using a one year data set to, well, to estimate the gallons? We just were using 2016 and projecting it out. We'll go back and look at that. Based on the questions that are coming, we'll go back and look at that again. But the methodology we're using is taking those gallons, which we're feeling more and more comfortable about because mm -hmm. they're staying consistent, yeah, right. um, and then applying. The question is really going to be where are all of us comfortable with what the average number is and what fluctuation do we anticipate mm -hmm. in the next calendar year? Okay, okay. now on, on, on the price. Uh, do you buy uh, regular gas or you buy high octane? Some vehicles require, like the police motorcycles and other, require the high octane, but most everything is the, the lowest okay. price you can get. Regular gas. So, uh, you know, if you had forty cents to a dollar ninety-five, I don't remember paying two thirty-five for a couple of years. Diesel. No, regular no, gas. We're talking gas. So, yeah. and, and again, we're dialing. We're going to dial that in a little closer. I don't know. Question mark. Yeah, so I, I think okay. we need to we need to tighten that up. Yeah, the question we? comes. I think we were using it again. I don't know if that was direct in front of me, but it was like eighty <coughs> something was our number, and we added like a roughly ten percent, ten cents, because we just don't know what it's going to do in the next. Right. Year. That's our concern. Oh well, I do. It's going down even further. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Pierce, you had a question. Yes, um, uh, this is for Christy. You passed out this gasoline chart, and it's a it's a year old. It's out of date, in other words. I don't believe I already passed out a gasoline chart this year. Yeah. Well, that Not one. that I was asked to provide. Where'd you get this? Um, I met probably duplicated that from the sheet I had. I did have last one. year. I did do one. So if you have one that's a year old, it's probably from last year. Yeah. I have, was not asked to provide the committee with a yeah. uh, sheet this year. Well, in view of the fact that we have quite a few questions about the gasoline usage, the biggest offender was the cemetery. Come, we're using a year to date of the thousand dollars. The one and really jack it way up. I think we need a document like this to, so we can uh, look at these gasoline charges pretty closely because even if you're looking to gasoline on this and you look the actual numbers, yeah, if you prorate it, I haven't thought about this particular line item, but uh, what we've seen so far, they're not prorated very well, in my opinion. So a sheet like this would be very helpful. We can get that information for our final review, which will start on December 1st. Because mm -hmm. we we know we need to do that. We need to look at cemetery again for their oil and filters mm -hmm. yeah. and diesel. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So we're going to have a new one of these. Is how we're requesting, Madam Chairman. Big pardon. You're going to get a new sheet like this. Well, I the asked finance for director has heard you make the request in behalf of the committee. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on the gasoline, what did I have a motion on gasoline? Yeah, it was part of Steve's motion, I believe, wasn't it? No, no. I didn't. I so moved. Mr. Jones is moving for gasoline for the fire department account 42201. Second. 4583. 4, Second, Regina. Two. Thank final you. Final review. In favor. <coughs> and this is temporary <coughs> until we get the final review. final review. Right. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing, Jenny? I voted yes. Oh, all right. But you voted fast. Okay. You know yes. <laughs> she, she's trying to move us along, you know? <laughs> New equipment, <laughs> office copier 7,500, and you have the chief's note. Motion on the copier. I'll make a motion for that. Mr. Second. McGranch, seconded by Steve. Are you doing new equipment? You yeah. understand? That is new equipment. The office dollars. copier. Yeah. The chief has a specific note. There. I do, and actually, just so that you know, this this oh, note is oh. dated. We've so actually had to is. destroy that copier okay. and throw it right. out. Uh, we're currently using the fire prevention. Uh, copier, which is older than this one that uh, we had to remove from service. So, the, as far as technology goes, no computers are able to talk to it or print off of it. The one that we're currently using is actually older than the one that we were looking to replace. Okay. Well, some are good and some aren't. In but favor, your number is not changing. Right? No. We, In favor of the uh, motion on yeah. the copier. I think In we favor. Already, we already voted. Yeah. No, you didn't vote. Yeah. Okay, well, we did again. Oh, did you? Yeah, we're unanimous anyway. Oh, I had, all right, we're unanimous. Anyway. Excellent. Now, regular wages, fire suppression. I want you to note here, please, 2,041,860. If you look at the lineup, you have nine, nine, relatively new firefighters in this department. This department had been consistent for a long time. You had the same tough guys who were trained and knew what they were doing and worked hard. And now it's switching over because people are getting injured and they're also retiring. So do you have anyone out on injury leave now? 
but right. I, 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 I know I do have one firefighter who is out on uh, injury leave. He's uh, he's had surgery at the end of July, and uh, he's slated to return beginning of the year. Uh, we also have one vacancy, and yes. that we're looking to fill. And so that puts you down to 27 firefighters right away, and then 26 with the vacancy, which is very difficult for a department that does the work that they do. Um, Madam Chair, I'd I, like to move uh, the two. You're going to move the two point zero four one eight six zero million. Okay. Second. Seconded by Mr. Henry. The final review on the and I have regular I, wages of fire suppression. And I have a couple more comments here. I was watching your appearance before the Board of Selectmen. And you were mentioning something to the effect that you had to wait on the, some of the water rescue training because you wanted to get the new people on your staff fully invested at least a year before you start doing other types <coughs> of training. Uh, One of, yeah, as you might on imagine, um, you know, coming into a new fire department, whether you've been a firefighter elsewhere or you're coming in green um, just after training, it takes a little while to, to get to know the ropes. Uh, to understand how we do things at Hampton Fire and how it's different from the department you might have left, um, or just to go to the recruit academy and come out from there and learn how to do it in our actual operating fire department. That training is ongoing daily with all of our probationary firefighters. The firefighters on duty, the, the officers on duty, they take it, um, that's that's their baby. They, they take the new firefighters, train them to be seasoned firefighters, really. Um, the best thing that an old firefighter can train a new firefighter to be is an old firefighter. Right, so we like to see that. Um, when they do the training like that, that they're concentrating primarily on fire and emergency medical services because that's our that's our bailiwick and that's where we work most often. Water rescue is a big portion of our business, especially oh, yes. you know summertime. We had um, we've had over 18 open water rescues in the last three years, and to that um, we put assets in the water. We put people in the water, uh, in swimmer gear, and we've rescued people off of the jetty, off of the rocks just outside of Seabrook. We've done it in open water through the surf. So that training, that level of training is extremely important, but the primary factor for me is to make sure that as a fire department, we're training firefighters first, EMS personnel, because that's a large portion of our volume of calls, and then we're gonna get to water rescue. It's, it's a tough job and it takes a lot of training. Uh, I will mention one personal thing. Uh, I helped out at Marston in September when they were having their uh, open house for the parents and new students and so forth. And uh, a gentleman came up to me whom I hadn't seen for many years, uh, Captain Richardson, and uh, God love him. And he said, I went to the fire department and nobody knew me. And I felt so bad. So although I, I hope, I think this picture is up on the wall, yeah. but uh, brought back fond memories and I have such respect for him and the firefighters who have left the department, but this department leaves its mark on everyone. And uh, the chief and deputy have uh, uh, a challenge ahead. It's always a challenge bringing on the new people, especially so many at once. If you have high quality other, people though, ma'am, I'm telling you right now, they're right high quality. Now. Well, we attract good. Uh, any questions? Uh, are you prepared to vote on the amount? Second for this, uh, Mr. Henderson. On uh, two million forty-one thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars on page thirty-two. In favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. Madam now, Chair, I'd like to move uh, the entirety, the uh, subtotal of fire suppression for two million. Well, you've got the overtime, so. We uh, can I want to do the I want to do the whole subline item. Here. Make your the whole subline. Two two million five hundred fifty nine thousand one hundred twenty seven dollars. I'll second that. To final review. Wait a minute. What page are you on? It's the same page. Same we're page. On. Okay. It's on the bottom. Subtotal of, of fire suppression. Oh, he's on this. Fire suppression. He's on this page. He's just moving the whole section. Right. I know. I just want to make sure that I'm going. I'm going where I'm supposed to go. Okay. So you're looking at the. Twenty-four four two two zero oh, two. Correct. Two two zero oh, two. In its entirety. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to find the. There you go. You had, you had two million five five nine one two seven. Yes, correct. Okay, you're so you're on page thirty-five. Okay, excellent. And second. I seconded it. 
Uh, Mr. LeBranch seconded. Who made the original motion? I did. Uh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Okay. Um, I have a few comments in this. Brian, uh, Brian, you have a question or yes. comment? Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to get women first. Um, new equipment. One thing I know is. Which page are you on, Brian? Right? I'm on 34. Oh, there it is. 34 in the middle of the page. Um, but if you go back through. The recap? Through everything in the budget. Yeah. Almost every line on the new equipment is zero. That make, concerns me that. So we're under fire suppression here, and the equipment that I was asking for is in suppression. Um, the, the hydraulic tools are on an engine. The ice rescue sled is is for firefighters who are going out into harm's way if they're going out on ice to do a rescue. Mm -hmm. So that's why we kept the new equipment there. We're not looking for new equipment other than the, the copying uh, machine that we just spoke about in administration. We're not seeking new equipment in, in that area of the budget. So that's why it's placed in that line now. Okay. That explains a little, but um, I just noticed it throughout the fire budget that anything new equipment was like zero. And I'm like, are we planning to come down hard on us one year or? Nope, uh, we are trying to spread it out. Um, you know, we are budgeted for new equipment as, as a normal budgeting cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, as an example, we had a fire at the Purple Urchin uh, in, on October 12th. Uh, during that time, we deployed two roof saws. Um, we two two chains on the chainsaws got destroyed. We had to buy them new. They're three hundred fifty dollars a piece. Uh, it's not a, a you know homeowner's type saw. So, in getting those that seven hundred dollars worth of chains, um, that new equipment is actually already budgeted for in the tools line item. So. The new equipment that we're talking about in this particular line item is actual new equipment that we don't have right now and that we're looking to establish on the, the apparatus. Yeah. Um, it just seems like we're... Okay. I, I guess that answers okay. my question. Okay, Michael? Yes, I have a question about the uh, overtime, overtime wages, um, 1400 What page are you on? Uh, I'm on the... Uh, uh, budget page. What? Turn it. Oh, I'm you no. Know, go into I'm the. Not, I'm not in the detail. You're line. in the narrative, guys. The account number, Mike. I was read. I read it off. Four two. You're in two hundred two, right? And I said seventy four fifty. No, we're in no not seventy four fifty. I'm sorry. It's fourteen hundred. <laughs> That's two hundred six, though, isn't it? Mm there are no page numbers on this page. Oh, uh, Michael, go in the narrative. You've got page numbers, and you've got a complete description. The chief went to the trouble of writing all this stuff. It's page 22. No, 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 no. Full time. Where is it? That's 1,400. What's the amount you're talking about, Mike? The 174,000? Yeah. Yeah, the overtime line right on the... The, you know, on the main sheet here, the general, whatever you call this thing, that's on the operating budget summary by expense page. And the detail is on page 32. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah the overtime. Right. Yeah, that isn't quite as obvious as it is on the other page, though. Because you, your actual for what it, this year is 162,606. And you requested uh, 148, and it was increased by to 147 by the admin. 174. 174, right, by the admin. And now we're ending up at 174. So I'm trying to figure out why there is so much overtime, number one, and why, is it, why are we jumping up with such a big number over the actuals? Uh, we've had, as you can see, in the 2015 actual, mm -hmm. right? We spent three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in overtime. I um, see that. In the the preceding or the succeeding budget, the, the next budget after that, we were instructed to come in with a zero-based line item and then default. Um, the hundred fourteen, one hundred thirteen thousand dollars is a default line item that's come three budget cycles, I do believe. Um, what we projected out was one hundred sixty-eight, one hundred sixty-two thousand. Right. Um, Christy was essential in helping us out with this, and she went back, we went back five years to do a, an average cost analysis and budgeted per firefighter and per um, hourly wage 
and the actual moving item from a five-year average was one hundred seventy-four thousand dollars to project it out. We had a lot of injuries, if you recall, and I know that um, Madam Wolsey, you just spoke about that. Oh yeah. Um, we did have a lot of injuries, and, and some of these were they were job-related, and it, some of them required people to separate service or retire out because of them. Right. Um, while they're vacant, we were filling their shifts. We run down. We currently run down to eight. So we're, we're staffed at nine to begin with on paper, but if somebody's out sick or if there's a vacation day, then we'll operate with eight firefighters and officers. So what that does is it, it lowers our operating costs because we're not paying overtime for the ninth person. Yeah. But even still, with the amount of injury that we saw in the past two years, uh, we saw uh, an increase in overtime. Okay, that helps a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Can I answer that question? Tim? When you submitted your request, this is five ahead, what formula did you use to come up with your differing number? Uh, we were using a similar formula. We were doing based over um, over five years. I think it was the last three that Christy had helped us out with because the, the numbers had changed and increased. Sorry? Your injury rates went up substantially in the short term. In the last two years, we saw enough. We saw five people out, I think, in 2014 and six uh, in six for a little while, and then five again. I'm asking about the formula that you used when you presented your number to the time manager. It was the same formula. Um, she had better figures. <laughs> I'm not well, I'm seeing an increase uh, from yep. what you requested, which was 148,000, and uh, that was increased to 174,000. So someone was using different formulas. And that would, the, that would be the math problem blamed on me. So you're using a different formula or the wrong calculator? <laughs> <laughs> Come over and see. Uh, what, we, what we were doing was calculating out the average um, for, for leave, right? Uh, we're basing it on sick, vacation, injury, and then uh, the other incorporated timeout would be military uh, and proton. So the numbers that, that I was using, that was my mistake, it was inaccurate by several, I believe we had two people out that I didn't account for. Christy was able to, to see that. So two people out resulted in a uh, and the overtime the change in the calculation oh, yeah. of overtime yeah. of uh, twenty six thousand dollars. Yep. But oh, over the course of a year. Yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I have a quick question, Christy. The uh, on page thirty five of the narratives, the two million five ninety eight one fifty two, which was moved, does that include? The administration's increase to one seventy four thousand in the overtime wages on thirty two. The two million five fifty nine one twenty seven is included. It's what is uh, in front of you from admin and BOS. Have the same amount. There. So the and so instead of the one forty eight nine fourteen on page thirty two, mm -hmm. and you have the total of two million five eighty eight one fifty five ninety eight one fifty two. It includes the 174,000 rather than that 148. Madam Chair, Madam Point of Order. Yes. Okay. First of all, you're looking at page 35. Yes. You have to understand if you look at the the graphic that's on yeah. the first page, that includes the changes that the Board of Selectmen made. Right. The okay. stuff that's on the other pages, a narrative uh, like from the chief. The, that's the right. narrative. Okay. So the motion right. that I made included the 174. It did. Yes. Okay. You, you made the motion for the right amount. The amount that she's looking at okay. is from the fire chief, but I not just up, want to make updated. sure we're not. That's why messing. you're getting confused. Okay? I want to make sure we're not messing anything up. It looks like the committee's okay. ready to vote, Madam Chair. Okay, no, um, no, we're not ready to vote yet because I have a couple of comments. And I have a couple more when you're ready. So we are looking at page 35. And I miscalculated, Chief. 2,598,152. Okay. You calculated? Next question that I have is starting on page 33. Yes, ma'am. It says, um, uh, under career incentives, it says, amount of EMS-related incentives that are transferred to the revolver. You mean the... the um, 027 fund, the which fund. is the ambulance billing fund? Yeah. Right. Okay. So right. the, the number that you see, you see a negative uh, on the wage yeah. line item on the graphic, like Mr. Jones has pointed out and Mr. Lowe pointed out. 
Um, we are actually getting ready to transfer over this year. Okay. And I do believe that um, uh, Ms. Malay told me that, and uh, I looked at it, $77,170.60 will be transferred this year. I just want to make sure. So it's going into the fund that's raised by fees for the ambulance. By insurance fees, that's correct. Yes. Insurance. The, in, the incentives are all paid by that fund. Okay. The same one we purchased the uh, supplies and also the ambulance as well. Yes. Now I'm going to get Chuck all excited. Fireworks detail wages, which is right underneath that. Now, if my recollection serves me right, and Chuck, correct me if you need to, I believe that the selectmen last year waived charging the Hampton Beach Village District for fireworks because you had not had that included in your budget. But usually, traditionally, you have budgeted for the fireworks details, no? No. I was it was we, we had been, I, I want to say 12 years ago, maybe longer. Oh, okay. Um, we came to the selectmen's meeting and they agreed that it was part of the town's event and they would continue to pay for it. Okay. Then it was brought up, but it was never brought up to us. We never had a meeting with the select. Okay. So, person. Okay. So. On page 34. Here on that point. What? On that point. On that point. Uh, I believe, Chuck, you went to the Board of Selectmen last year and asked them to suspend the fee because you hadn't put it in your budget and they voted to suspend the fee for one year yeah and no action has been taken beyond that that i'm aware of that was so, my recollection right yeah. so uh in 2017 the fee should be in play negative i uh, believe that it was um still responded to it the same way that this was a town function and that they were going to cover it initially last year's cost was um deferred to the 26 fund which is a special detail fund so our firefighters that went down to the inspections and the standby detail were paid out of the 26 fund for the fireworks this year we're placing it back into um that this particular line item uh with the appropriate increases to cover the cost so you're paying for it through the special detail fund you're saying last year we did because and in 2017 is your expectation to do it again no in 2017 the expectation is it's going to come under the fire department budget so we should expect a decrease in the detail fund as a consequence, right? Because you're not using that fund for the fireworks coverage this time, right? It, so it won't be decreasing. It'll be left alone. This year, this past year, I believe we spent a little over six, $6,800 on that. Okay. No, I still it's not okay, but I understand. Well, um, on page 34 at the top, Chief, you have diesel fuel. Do you, do you have anything that uses oil and filters? Because that's another segment of the... All of our vehicles do, yeah. uh, obviously. And we have vehicle maintenance light item yeah. where that's usually taken care of in our preventative maintenance. Deputy Kennedy is actually in charge of preventative maintenance for all of the vehicles. Okay. And he takes care, I mean, to the point that you can see that the condition that they're in, um, they're in exceptional condition. So we're not going to see oil and filters, but that's part that's of the That's because that's part of his budget. budget, right? Which is so we're just seeing gasoline and diesel here. And the same for diesel, um, Manager Sullivan, you're going to take a look at the diesel prices as well as the, yeah, the fuel gas. Yeah, the look fuel. at all the fuel. Okay. Um, just, just so I can be clear, those fuel lines that we're talking about the gas cost, right? So any fuel that the department might use for like a generator or for a chainsaw okay. or anything, that's a deal. Because the taxes can only come off of road vehicles. Okay, and that's diesel too, gasoline, diesel, whatever. Yeah, pretty much think in terms of the wax car and the data that we're going to analyze yeah. for you is only for things with wheels that can drive on the road with. Okay. Other than that, if it's an off-road vehicle or it's a chain car, something else has to be paid at the pump price or okay. the state price because okay. the taxes are for the driving on the road. And the road. That's a good. That's a good uh, clarification. Okay. Um, new equipment. Yes, ma'am. Hydraulic rescue tools for engine four, ice rescue kits, sled, and the pole system. Yes, ma'am. I'm a little uh, concerned about the reduction in that. We do get ice. We do have water. We do. It, we may need to make a rescue. I think that's short-sighted. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, but I'm not happy about seeing that cut. Now, replacement equipment, that really got me excited. We should not have any 35-year-old hose in the Hampton Fire Department. 
I have some of those expandable hoses for my garden if you want me to make a donation. I think it's outrageous, outrageous to have 35-year-old hose filled at the A Street fire. Didn't we have a hose problem at that? I seem to remember something at the A Street and there was a problem with the hose. I don't know whether it burst or whatever, but I, I have a recollection in the back of my mind on that one. Well, something uh, burned up, but... You yeah. cannot, you cannot run this fire department. You cannot run a modern fire department with old hose. I really, I'm... The, the ex uh, expected life uh, for a, a fire hose to be deployed is 10 years. Yes. Well, currently, we do have a lot that is 35 years old. Um, when we purchased Engine 4, we went out and researched, and Lieutenant Gann is the one who did uh, the bulk of the research, and he researched the best hose to have friction losses and m maneuverability for the firefighters. Um, we ended up buying new hose for Engine 4, yeah. and uh, this hose has already shown that it's, it's performing very well. Um, on, the, the guys like to use it. It's easy to pack. Um, the friction loss is considerably less, which is, you know, it's beneficial when they're fighting a fire. Um, we do test annually our hose, so if something is a problem, um, we have had burst hose lines, we've had hoses not pass the test, so they're taken out of service. There are still hoses that are in reserve right now that are 35 years old. Many of them are at least 20 years old. So. I, I don't know how the rest of you feel about that, but I am not happy to see <coughs> I that. I know the chief thinks he needs new hoses. Do you? Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna see where we stand um, once we get through the process. You need new hoses for 2017. That's the goal. Yes, you do. So you need more money to buy those hoses. Well, like I said, you know, we've gone through the process, and we feel very comfortable that we'll be able to make a decision once we know where we stand on the budget. Yeah, fourteen thousand one ninety to replace. Now, will that replace that all the old hose? It wouldn't play. Uh, it would replace the. It would outfit three engines. Okay. Um, it wouldn't replace all of the reserve hose, but the the way we would do it is that we would remove the oldest hose first right. and replace that, and right. then the the fifteen year old hose would become reserve. Right. I really got excited when I saw that, Mr. LeBranch. Yes. <coughs> um, so going back to new equipment, you had so. requested forty eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, and it was reduced to twenty two thousand nine hundred and fifty. Right. You have a hydraulic rescue tool, which is what, the jars of life or something? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And a ice rescue sled that for, for seventy nine fifty, which you've been wanting now for a couple of years. Yes. Now, with 22950 how is that going to, I mean, I can see that you could buy the ice rescue kit for seventy nine fifty, but how are you going to get the jaws of life? You're simply not going to get it? Uh, we'll have to evaluate it once we get the, the budget set, but uh, as of right now, you know, making a decision whether or not we get a, a set of cutters or a set of spreaders, um, you know, prioritize once we see the where we stand. Okay, so you're going to you're gonna do a workaround, right? You're comfortable with that? Yes, sir. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. What do we do with the hose for him? Well, again, are you comfortable with doing the, doing the workaround? Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna eliminate the thirty five year old folks. Okay, so if he's you. comfortable with it, then okay. I'm comfortable as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well, you. as I understand, the ice rescue kit is no longer something under consideration. Uh, that, as it, as it stands right now, we're looking to see if we're able to uh, purchase. Um, actually, next next week we're looking to see if we can purchase um, an ice rescue sled. Not all of the equipment, but we're looking to do it uh, in shorter segments and smaller pieces. Okay. As we go. It's what I'm looking at, Chief. Is I, mean, I guess. <laughs> These notes are your, no, your, your notes, Correct. right? Yep. Right. And so you've got 41000 for hydraulic rescue tools and 8000 essentially for the ice uh, rescue kit, $49,000, which was your request. And then it was cut down to twenty two nine. And so I don't know how you're going to buy anything <laughs> with twenty two nine when you're looking. Well, maybe you can buy the ice rescue kit, and that's it. Well, or maybe two of them. Right. There's, there's also other accoutrements that go with that, right? Like outfits to get in the water. Um, and when you, if you imagine if there's ice in the water, then the guy's going to be really cold, so they need proper gear. So that may not come in this year's purchase. We'll look to do that again, and and. Um, piece my point is, these, these notes are not useful to us in terms of explaining the new equipment line item, because it explains how uh, the forty nine thousand that you requested. Sure. As opposed to the twenty three thousand. I, I would like to point out that requesting. you know the, the the notes and narratives that you see were submitted to um, the board of selectmen and to the uh, town manager in June. 
And so uh, we go through the process in July and in August and in October. Right. So when we get here, some of these are a little bit um, antiquated because there have been changes along the way. Okay. Yeah, so one is left to wonder because one cannot rely on the notes. What are you going to do with the $23,000 that the Board of Selectmen is putting under new equipment? Prioritize our tasks and yeah. purchase what we need. So we don't know the answer, right. basically. I don't know. Well, I don't know what I'm going to be left with at the bottom line for that. Right, so the answer is I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, thank you. Just budget cool. as best you can. <laughs> All I can ask for is facts, and you give me I don't know. That's a fact. <laughs> however, however, doing the ice rescue or whatever, and just buying a sled, or, and then you have supplement in two it's years not for us to whatever. prioritize anyway. It, it seems to me that that's more dangerous than having nothing if you have a nice sled but not the other equipment to go with it. It's uh, that's well, a concern too. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> yeah, enough. All right. Does anyone else have? Yes. You know, I was talking about the the uh, fireworks thing. Yes, sir. And you said it was paid last year under the special details. Correct. Could you guide me as to where the special details are? I don't see that line item. Line twenty uh, fund twenty six, which uh, you know that. Oh, it's a separate fund. It's correct. not in the budget. That's it's a separate right. fund. Do you know the status of that fund? I don't. Well, you get the printout on the back of the monthly um, reports. I don't believe it reports the status of funds. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the yeah. fund is fund 26, yeah. which is you probably recognize it more as the police detail fund. Ah, the so we took it out of police. Are also a part of that, or yeah. okay. a very small part of it. That's okay. what it came out. So the police detail fund is funded by the forfeiture stuff, right? By what, sir? By the forfeiture yeah, stuff that we do. Funded by here. details that are paid by okay. companies. Revenue. Right. And, uh, yeah. Exactly. It's the yeah. revenue that comes from that. Okay. And is there any reason why we couldn't continue to, to uh, use that fund to fund the, the fireworks uh, from the fire department? Just have to be cautious of how much because this is a non-replaceable thing. Right. Well, I'm talking about seven and a half thousand according right. to the budget. Yeah. Yeah. But then the police has their issues as well. So the decision was made if this is a service that we're going to provide to put it in the budget. If you want to make some other decision, you certainly can. Right. Okay. Are you ready for the bottom line, which was moved at two million five nine eight one five two? I think. No. 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 Five. Okay. Uh, two million five hundred and fifty nine thousand one hundred and twenty seven was moved two, by five, Mr. Jones. Yeah, that was five, my motion. Nine. One final comment, Madam Chair. Wait a minute. Two million five five nine. One two seven. One two seven. Thank you. Since we are moving this to final review, I I will. Uh, have my ears open as to why I shouldn't remove that 7,500 and let the <coughs> detail fund the end that, as it did successfully last year. And I'm also open to my ears to restoring the new equipment line item. So I, would, I, will, I will take that into consideration in final review, which is what this motion is moving your budget to. Thank you, sir. I'll second. I already seconded oh, it. We have second. it. Okay. All right. In Pretty favor good. of the total fire suppression. For unanimous. No, Jenny, Jenny's going to kind of dick me. I am, because they should, if you want to put that $26,000 in, you should do it. Well, I, really, I, how, a guy in the water is not going to wait until right. another year I'm, where I'm they in, get... I'm inclined to, I said I'm inclined to listen to the argument and other people that have wisdom to give it to me or us, mm -hmm. but right now I'm not convinced as to what to do on those two points. So we, there's we time. Can, we'll do it at final review. We, this is to take yeah. us to final review, and right. we will review. And I have your share your concerns, Jenny. And this is also, but if we put the twenty-six thousand dollars in the budget, there's no guarantee that that's that. Correct. Go because we're approving a bottom line budget, not a line item. Yeah, I know. That's a true. That's point. a that's a larger nut that, that can't be cracked. I understand. Try it again. Well, well, in favor of the motion to yeah. get this to our final review, unanimous. Okay. okay. Madam Chair, I move fire prevention. One, one hundred five three zero two. I will second that. I will to second final that. review. I will second that. Okay. And this Thank takes you, Steve. you through yeah. fire prevention. Wait a minute. Okay. Well, I'm I'm working on two no, different no, no, lines yeah. here. Yeah. So your bottom line for fire prevention is what again? One oh five three zero two. One oh five three zero two. It's thirty six. Thirty six. Okay, right at the top of the page, obviously. Questions? In favor? Unanimous. Okay. Training. Medical services, new equipment. Yeah, I'll move $37,978. And I will second it. Wait Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Wait a minute. Where are you? <laughs> 
total you're training. On page 36. I'm seeing 73. That's 63. because you're looking at that's the why, Okay, well, that's why I need you guys. Right. Rather Motion than, again is? I am moving $37,978 to final review consideration. Right. For training. And who seconded I it? did. Okay. I seconded Seconded it. by Mr. LeBranch. In favor? We're we? Of moving it forward. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous. Um, Good. Madam Chair, I'd like to move uh, under fire communication $236,304 to I final will second review that. consideration. Two thirty-six three zero four. Okay. Your radios and stuff working better now? Since we've installed the FDD circuits, we've noticed a dramatic increase in People uh, can actually call you now Absolutely. and reach you. We are. We're still having problems at the beach, as you might imagine. It's very fl uh, flat down there and uh, radios work in a line of sight type of manner so it's difficult to hit with a portable yeah. um, we're actually working on on upgrading the system as much as possible and in conjunction with lieutenant goditis of the police department we're looking at a projected changeover or upgrade to the system between 2018 and 2020. excellent okay all right you understand the intent in uh, favor I I, no i have a question you have a question mike yes uh on the um, line item uh 4310 You've got the radio maintenance going from actual 3311 for 16 up to request uh, up to 15 15,666. So I was just curious what caused that big jump. There, there's uh, several requirements that um, are that go along with the new FDDA circuits. One of them is a monthly charge. Uh, as you might recall, when we were here last time, we were discussing the, the two-wire system that Alexander Graham Bell had invented, uh, connected our voter system, which is our antennas. Um, the FDDA circuits are four-wire digital system that is monitored, so there's a monthly cost that goes along with that. That has been placed in that line item for radio maintenance, along with we had a couple of other items that needed to be adjusted because of our uh, maintenance moving forward. That's right. We moved the repeater and the comparator from um, Falcon Circle to the fire station. Oh. So that's actually down here now, um, which gives us the opportunity. It's First of all, it's uh, weather tight and safer that way, but it also gives us the opportunity for our fire alarm operators to go in and see if there's a problem. <coughs> if, one the, if one of the voters is offline, they'll be able to see it and address it immediately. So right now, I guess the question, what, and a, some of the question would be, you budgeted 12502 and you've only spent three three eleven so far as of nine thirty this year. Yeah, and I can guarantee you that number's changed since. Okay, so you think it might come close? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question on that same yes, sir. sub line. You said it was monitoring. Is the cost of that monitoring? What is that cost? Uh, off the top of my head, I believe it's five hundred fourteen dollars a month. Right? Yeah. Is that right? Five hundred fourteen dollars a month. Six thousand a year. Yes. Six thousand two hundred fifty eight dollars to monitor. Yes. And repair. But you have to understand. Not just to monitor, right? That, that, no, they will repair it. That's their line. Of where uh, the, the idea behind monitoring, um, the, the voters are actually antenna. And so they're dispersed strategically throughout the community. For an unknown period of time, two of the uh, voter systems with the wires that connect to what was once our repeater over at Falcon Circle were down, and we had no idea. Uh, we had poor radio communications, but we didn't know why. Yeah. So they went out and had to research it and find the circle was down. Now, immediately, they'll know, because they're monitoring it, if the circuit goes down, they'll go out and address the problem immediately so that we'll have upgraded communications, and if we're on the scene, they'll, they'll know that that line is down immediately. And they'll repair it without charge? I believe that it is, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. 6000 6, a year. Correct. We don't have to worry about that element of radio uh, maintenance anymore. That's right. Okay, so that explains um, one-third of... One third of what? Of your budget, which is fifteen thousand. Well, radio maintenance is an overall um, task too. I mean, we have portable radios that need to be maintained. We use um, speaker mics, which are uh, on our portable radios. Mm -hmm. You see them on lapel mics. Uh, frequently, those go down, whether it's the wire fraying or breaking. Those are one hundred and nine, I don't yep. right, one hundred nine dollars a piece mm -hmm. um, to to replace. Um, as it stands right now, we're looking forward at, at Seabrook Fire, who we do backup um, communications for. They just changed to their own frequency, and so we have to reprogram portables and also mobile radios uh, to take the new frequency, which is a, a significant cost, over $1,000 to have them all reprogrammed. 
So that radio maintenance line item also encompasses a great deal of radio maintenance, actual portables, mobiles, and um, base stations. So it sounds like a big portion of that is actually buying new radios when they're just not repairable, is that it? Uh, no, not really, because we, we haven't purchased a new portable since I've been here, actually. So it was an actual repair? Uh, yeah, actual repairs. Okay. And they're not done by your staff, but by someone? No, sir, we use a company outside. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Are we set on... Now I'm, I'm flipping from page to communications. page here. We're set on the training at 37978. No, no. We already did that. We're doing communications. Communications. We have, a, have we voted? Yeah, yeah. we did vote on the training. Yeah. Okay. So uh, communications vote. now. Let's get this proper. 236304? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Oh, regular wages, overtime wages, telephone, etc. Chief, go ahead. We just finished that. We just finished, finished it. No, yeah. no, we're ready to vote. We're ready to vote on that. Communications. We just said that. Wait a minute. We, have to vote we did training. Now we should be on communication. Right. We just we had a motion. We just discussed it. We talked about radios. Yes, but I, the last motion I had was thirty-seven nine seventy-eight under training. No, 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 no. That was training. Okay, so we are doing the two thirty-six three zero four. Right. I moved. Steve and seconded, and we've been discussing. I got it right here. Okay. Everybody in favor? You love yeah. all the radios and stuff. Go. Good. We're yes. unanimous. There you go. Madam Chair, I'd like to move repair services on the fire department for one hundred and twenty-seven thousand one hundred fifty dollars to the final review. I'll make. A, I'll second Seconded that. Seconded by Mr. LeBranch. Okay. In favor? Overtime. Well, I have to wonder under repair services why maintenance repair is not under repair services. <laughs> Uh, that's for communications equipment and repair services that you're seeing right there is typically vehicle maintenance uh, and also okay. the repairs that occur down at the pier. So we uh, we have to winterize, as you might imagine, we have water and electric that's uh, supplied to the <coughs> state pier and we have to winterize that. So that, that time, um, over the course of the, uh, several storms, we had some of the rubber bumpers, and I know that Lieutenant Wise is going to hit me for saying it like that, but um, some of the rubber bumpers on the dock had to be replaced this year, so there was time spent on there. Uh, the vehicle maintenance side of the house, we know that there are uh, anticipated cost increases. We've been told that anywhere between 5 and 15% on labor and on parts for different vehicles and different um, <coughs> manufacturers. So the vehicle maintenance actually includes PIER, P-I-E-R. Correct. Uh, to, to some degree. So the $1,500 that you see for the overtime, the if there's repairs to be made, that comes out of that line item. Um, there is a separate section for pier maintenance. You'll see, uh, I believe it's 6305, which is in the next section, yeah. and that is for um, parts and utilities that are yeah. necessary for that. That's the end of the budget. Yeah, right. the, um, you requested 6000 for pier maintenance, and the town manager said, no, you only need five. I projected uh, that. What do we lose? We lost um, not much, but the, we lost painting, uh, to be honest with you. Some painting and some some of the um, uh, undressed, um, you know, uh, maintenance items that have been going deferred for a long time. So there's a shack down there. that It's a, it's a shed that's been built to house equipment. That equipment is um, um, PFDs, right, personal flotation devices and, and gear like that. Uh, it's it's a little bit weathered. We we're looking to repaint this year, and we may have to defer that. Well, maybe you can get the village district beautification committee to paint it for you. That would be a wonderful <laughs> idea. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Boy, I got so excited. All right. Are you ready for the yes. vote on repair services one twenty seven one fifty? In favor. Um, Madam Chair, I'll move. Uh, Wait a minute, because I want to make sure that it's Barbara is. Got that, my dear? Yeah. Okay. Fire yeah, stations and buildings. Fire stations and buildings. $112,870. I'll second that to final review. Thank you, Steve. Barbara, did you get that number? 112870? Yes. Okay. Is that again? You understand the intent there. Uh, Chief, where it says heating fuel, I assume that's gas. Yes, ma'am. Yes, heat. Yeah. Okay. Natural gas. Mm -hmm. All set? Ready for that? Yeah. Okay. In favor? 112.870. Unanimous. Now, confirming. So we have made no changes at this point in time. Correct. So I'll move the total fire department for $3 million. $549,446 to the Budget Committee's final review session. I'll second that. And you understand the intent. Okay, in Can favor? Can you help me out with that again? Okay, 
446. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Deputy Chief. We will have a final review and you will be advised. Thank you, ma'am. Good job. Thank you.